Hi, this is Kevin Whistler, and you're listening to Stand in the Light. The next episode you're about to hear is I Will, and it's about praise. Well, definitely a departure from everything else. That's, I mean, there's no replacing or outdoing any of those classic Ludgood songs from the past. But to come out with this album was like way more mature on the writing, and production was really more of that clear, modern sound. We were, everything was a lot more in the pocket. It was pretty cool. This one had to be finished because I think I started working with that riff around 2001 would be probably the closest guess. And I must have submitted it to five, six different people. And everyone loved the riff and no one could come up with anything. Another one of those songs that definitely uh, was different. Every time I would get any kind of new recording gear, I must have a version of the music on this song on everything from ADAP, you know, all the way to a, the studio recording, just because that riff was just in my head. Pretty cool how uh, Paul came up with the idea with another writer and brought it to the table. I gave it to Les, I would say, a couple times, different times, and uh, he loved it, couldn't come up with anything, and then Kevin brought in Greg Sweet, we played in the band Watchmen with, and Greg was like, why don't I come over and we'll mess around with it. He goes, I love it. I'm not real sure how everything ended up. I, I know I did some rhythm guitar parts, and, and I know Paul did all the rest of the details with guitar. He came over one night, again, we were right here, and we recorded it, and then he and I worked out a uh, melody and lyrics and he was really fired up about reading about David you know and kind of his celebration and love of just I guess music and just being inspired by the Lord and so we just all these positive things were coming out and I'm like oh, I don't think this is gonna make it because usually there's some kind of dragon or demon or some kind of you know a volcano that happens in a blood good song i don't know if we can just straight just like talk about happiness and dancing paul had come up with the original riff and neither uh, les and i could really grab a hold of what to do with it melodically or lyrically so kevin Wister, one of his buddies greg sweet who's a lead singer in watchman started writing the, the melodic line and they came up with i will so uh, we brought in greg as an outside writer and we were really happy with how it turned out just sitting in the studio late one night with Les recording the vocal on this was really a cool time. This song was written by Paul Jackson and Greg Sweet, and when I heard it, man, I was just blown away. We spent one late night just kind of going through all of the verses and letting Les kind of feel it out. And when I work with Les on vocals, I like to let him kind of make it his own. We had a demo of it from the guy that Paul worked with uh, writing the song, and you know, Les had to make it his own, and he does such a great job of doing that. The melody, and just the posture, the lyric, the sounds, the sitar, and uh, the solos and everything, I was just so blessed to sing this. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, uh, Greg. It uh, wound up taking great shape. I think Les did a, a great job of getting behind it passion-wise in the studio and doing a wonderful performance. There's just that classic Les Carlson style that is all over that song. You know, acting as producer, he and I, you know, we had to work through some things on this record because there were outside writers, you know, influence, and that's not easy to just, just because you can play guitar or sing doesn't mean that someone can go sing this and you do it with conviction and passion. Gosh, it's really great to hear his voice on that. It's just got so much character to it. Just one of the best performances on the whole album. I think he rose to the occasion and did a great job. Gave me a chance to sing. I mean, that was uh, another thing, sitting there in the studio, and I go, they're going, what else do you want to do? And I go, I think I want to sing on this. And they all looked at me like I was just a little bit crazy, you know, and maybe too power hungry from getting the producer uh, nod. 
it's a different time now. We can do a lot more with recording than we used to. It goes quicker. It's easier to put things down and spend the time and make it work. So I just heard this Beatles-y type vocal at the end. And so I got a chance to go in. I, I really had the funniest feeling because I think they all kind of were encouraging me on the way out the door, but when the control room door shut, I think they're going, this is going to be awesome. You know, we're not going to use this. And <laughs> so uh, I did a first run of it and then they all just kept staring at me. So I was like, okay. And they go double that. So I did a double, I did a harmony. And then they're like, okay, you like it. Of course, Michael says, I want to sing too. I'm like, no. <laughs> but overall, uh, as far as the album goes, oh, this has got to be one of my favorite albums that I've recorded in a long time. Yeah, we've done some interviews uh, where that's their favorite song. I was pleased because, like I said, it took a little bit of convincing on all angles. I could buy a mic just by putting sitar in the song because that rung his beetle bell. And he was like, okay. But this is truly, truly a praise song. So enjoy. Now, here's your host, Paul Doty, with Michael Bloodgood. Hi, this is Paul Doty. Welcome back to Stand in the Light. We're sitting down with Bloodgood's bass player, Michael Bloodgood, and band namesake. Yes, hello everybody. Good to be here. <laughs> we are looking at the song, I Will, today. Modern praise song? It's exactly what it is. It's yeah. a modern praise song. It's just, a, it's a very simple song. And it's just praising the guy, just reflecting what God has done for him, and just resting in that, and just singing his praises. I love it. Yeah. Besides Blood Good, I have run front of house sound through the years, and a lot of you know me from a lot of different Christian bands. Another band that I work with all the time is a band called Baron Cross, and uh, we had a song called King of Kings, and it was just uh, Steve Whitaker wrote that one. We just sat. He sat down and said, "You know, I'm just going to write a modern praise song." Yeah. With how hard can it be? <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> and I Will is a good one. Um, let's see, who wrote this one? Well, actually, Paul came up with the, you know, the instrumental version of it, and he had given it to Les a long time ago, and Les didn't come up with anything, and he gave it to me while we were in pre-production, and I, I, nothing was clicking with me. So um, we were jamming with a guy named Greg Sweet, who was the lead singer to uh, Kevin Whistler, a drummer's band, Watchmen, which was a label mate back in the day. They were frontline artists, as were we. And Greg's got a great voice, and of course he'd written songs. And so Paul said, well, let's, let's the two of us get together. So they went over to Paul's infamous you know, man cave over there in Tacoma, where we had written some songs. And the two of them put this together and came up with I Will. We have a lot of outside collaboration on this record which is great. It gives us just a little bit more depth and, and, and interest, maybe, than what we've done before. I don't know if it gives any more depth or not, but it's just great to bring in other guys that are, don't have the history with us and see what they came up with. And this one, to me, was just, uh, again, another really fun song to play and perform and just a great worship song I think people are just going to enjoy. Mm. Well, my, one of my favorite things from a technical standpoint is bringing in the sitar. We actually want to do that on SOS off of our All Stand Together record, so Paul says this is going to be perfect in that breakdown to bring in, you know, a, a, a sitar. So that was, again, something we had never done before. On this album, there's a lot of different, um, you know, as an engineer listening to it, I'm hearing a lot of different guitars, a lot of different amplifiers. Was there a lot of different instrumentation used Oh, yeah. On? I mean, traditionally, you know, you're a rock band. You show up with your bass and your guys show up with their guitars and one each and maybe an acoustic guitar and you go for it. But Paul Jackson and I decided early on, I says, look, Let's really give this album some textures. Let's give it some different tones. And guys that know me, I'm a real guitar junkie. Paul is too. I have like 13 guitars. So let's just bring these in. So we brought in my tennis, my Gretsch Tennessee, and we brought in my, my Epiphone Revolution. We brought in, 
you know, a flatline uh, guitar, you know, local guitar company. So we used a lot of, we actually used 17 different instruments mm -hmm. on this album, including acoustic guitars. I used three different basses. Uh, so we, we wanted to really bring in a lot of different tones and textures. Uh, and I think we did. A, a, amplification was the same. We were using a AC30 Vox, uh, using a, a Mesa Boogie rectifier. And I, I can't remember what the third album was, probably a Fender of some kind, just to give, just really give it a lot of tonal depth and, and create more interest than, you know, a Les Paul going through a Marshall stack necessarily. Now, David Safiro mixed the album. Mark Simmons mixed it, but Dave mastered it. Dave had his hand in the mix mastered. as well. We all did. We were all, you know, really scrutinizing the mixes. Mm -hmm. But Mark Simmons did our engineer. And then Dave, thankfully, came in and mastered the record, in which we were really, really excited to have him on board again. How did your mix down engineer feel about all of the <laughs> different. <laughs> well, you know, that we welcome to, to the world of Blood Good, you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, it's our first album in, you know, over two decades. And so, yeah, it was very, very hands on. And we've self-produced several times over the year, years, so you know we're not uh, bashful, but we're also professional. You know, I'm not going to sit here as a bass player and keep saying more bass, more bass, and Paul's going to go more guitar, more guitar. You know, we understand the dynamics. Mark was very excited to bring David in because David has got the magic ears and the magic bag of tricks. You know, he's got quite a career. He's got you know so many devil words he's using for you know. Uh, paperweights now i think and mm -hmm. grammy nominated and the stuff he's doing is world class because he's a world class artist and so when we were able to get him to come in thanks to our kickstarter supporters kicking in a little bit extra we we're able to afford to bring david in to bring in the mastering and it really took the the album to a level that we could have never done without him i recently sat down with david Safiro after uh, it had to have been well over 10 years since i'd seen dave last and uh, we, we sat down and we caught up. Uh, the last time that I worked on the road with Dave, Dave was simply the guitarist for Bloodgood. Right. And a writer for Bloodgood. And that was his entire background. Since then, uh, everyone that knows David's history, he's he's gone on to be, like you said, a Dev Award winning uh, engineer, producer, and uh, spends a lot of his time as a sound engineer now. Yes. So when we sat down, the first thing... <laughs> <laughs> he just looks over to me like, only Dave can. <laughs> and he goes, oh, by the way, um, first thing I want to do, I want to apologize. <laughs> I'm going, what do, you, what do you want to apologize for? He goes, just for being a guitarist out on the road. He goes, I don't know how you dealt with me with, with tones. and this. I had no idea what I was doing. And I said, oh, well, did, did I give you a hard time or something? Because no, you didn't. It's like everything I threw at you, you just kind of shrugged and said, "Yeah, okay, I can deal with it." Because <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think I got that call from David for different reasons, but what a great guy! And Dave, you know, we're, we're all very close in this band. David's, you know, one of my favorite people on the planet. He and Susan, his wife, are just dear people. And but you know what I remember, Paul, is you know I went out on the road and I had a uh, 418 cabinets. You know, uh, double 18 cabinets, PV, you know, the big mega head and stuff like that. And, and I'd plug them both in and, and inevitably I'd hear on the talk about my unplug one of those cabinets. So, because, uh, you know, you don't really play a lot of venues where you need a 418 cabinet. In, fa yeah. in fact, I would say now in hindsight, you don't need two 18s anywhere, you yeah. know. But uh, anyway, I was always laughing about that. So it looked cool, but I only using one of the cabinets 90% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, back even back in the day, we would be using at least three channels on your bass. Yes, head, right. <laughs> you know, back in, during detonation and, and all stand together and stuff, nobody was doing stuff like that. We no. were. <laughs> well, we did. You know, we were, we were three piece. You know, we you know we were a power trio. It was just guitar, bass, and drums, and of course less singing. So yeah, we, I, I think I love the approach that you had towards the band, and uh, I always reminded you that I'm the bass player, and the name of the band is Bloodgood, and so <laughs> I, I want three channels. Did I no, mention I it's called Bloodgood? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mike, I know. Yeah. That's that's. I did use that with other sound men, although you know that were hired for the for a gig or whatever. Oh man. <laughs> okay, back to the song. Oh yeah, back to the song. What were we talking about? Hmm. <laughs> One of the things I like about this song, and just the fact that the band has done a, a, a flat-out praise song, uh, and simple as that, you know, as artists, you just, you write what you're interested in. You yes. write whatever is pertinent at the time in your life. I don't know that you can be an, a Christian artist and eventually 
not write something along the lines of a praise song. So people will probably say, "Well, the Messiah is a praise song," and and it is. Mm-hmm. Well, not written as a praise song, but mm-hmm. when we do that song, I remember the first time when we when we reformed in two thousand and seven, we went out to Cornerstone to play it, and you know, and this the venue is just full of people with their hands in the air when we hit that song, and it was. I don't want to use magical, but you know what I mean. It was just, sure. it was the anointing was so heavy, and these people are just praising God. And I said, well, yeah, that's, you know. Mm-hmm. And really, really, when we're singing about Him, even, you know, it's it's all praise. You know, it doesn't have to be in this formula, what is praise? Well, praise is giving money, praise is serving, praise is all these things because we're doing to His glory. Exactly. Yeah, and it is difficult. When I did my solo album years ago, you know, I started writing praise and worship music. And it was very difficult because it's, it's, it's such a different mindset than writing a pop song or a metal song. It's just about something. You know, getting choruses and things, you know, that really creates more of a worshipful attitude, you know, as opposed to trying to tell a story or admonish somebody or whatever it might be, just to do something for the sake of praising the Lord. It's, it's great. Hmm. It's, it's a challenge. Mike, thanks for sitting down again with us this week. And the album is Dangerously Close from Bloodgood. And the song is... I will. I will sing your praise through the darkest days, crying out to you into the night. I will walk with you Till my days are through And I'm standing there Right by your side I will I will For listening to Stand in the Light, visit us online at bloodgoodband.com, like us on Facebook, or Twitter us. Stand in the Light is brought to you by West Coast Sound and Light and Be Good Records. Bloodgood is Michael Bloodgood, Wes Carlson, Paul Jackson, Oz Fox, Kevin Whistler, and occasionally David Safaro. Licensing fees have been paid by ASCAP and BMI. I'm Les Carlson, and don't forget to say your prayers. Hi, this is your host, Paul Doty. Welcome back to... No, I'm not going to do that. No, you're not going to welcome back. Here we are. Woo! Yeah. Premiere. Woo-hoo. Yes. (laughs) Hello, this is... (coughs) Coughing post. (laughs) 
Hello and welcome to Stand in Your Light. <laughs> <laughs> He's choking, everybody. He's choking. <laughs> oh, gosh.